Hey guys, today we're going to be using Java to create an executable jar file. So we're, we're going to start out with a project over here. Um, so I've got a terminal open and um, I'm going to start out by creating a directory for our project. So it, it, we're going to use a standard package name. This is going to be a basic simple hello world program, but it's going to be packaged together as a jar file and it's going to be executable. So um, we're just going to do an mkdir-p and the dash p makes it recursive. So even though you know the parent directory doesn't exist it'll it'll still create the parent directory and all the subdirectories in one shot so here we go so now <clears throat> we if we go like this we can see this is what our directory structure looks like we have a com directory test directory and a hello world directory so moving right along here we're going to create our first source file so um let's see here we're gonna VI this like this, and you could use any editor that you feel comfortable with. And this is almost the same thing on you know Windows, Mac, or Mac OS, but today we're just using Linux. Anyways, um, I'm gonna VI the, our first source file, and this is you only need one source file to create a basic uh, jar file, but I'm gonna show you how you can make a more complicated one later after we show you this first example. So let's take a look at this source file. It's blank, right? because we just created it. I'm going to copy and paste some simple hello world code in here. Now, here we go. Now, package is com test hello world. See how that matches our directory structure that we created? All right, so um, our class is named hello world. So this is our executable class. That's our, when, when we actually compile this, the class is going to be named hello world. And all it does is print out the words hello world. So let's write and quit to save the file. Now we're going to compile this using Java C. So Java C and we're just compiling any dot Java file in that directory, right? So Java C and there we go. We've compiled it. Now let's do a quick find just to show you what the directory structure looks like now. So there we go. Same directory structure. Now you'll notice we have our source file and our class file. So the class file is our binary. It's compiled bytecode. So Let's see here. What we're going to do is we're going to start out first. We're going to create a non-executable jar file. Then we're going to create an executable jar file. So let's start out with this. We're going to say jar cf hello world dot and then there's the this is the class that we're going to reference. So and so jar file and the actual class. And there we go. So find dot, there's our directory structure. It put the jar file in the current directory, not within this project source code directory, right? So um, let's see here. We are going to show the files inside the jar file like this. So jar tf, hello world dot jar. And there we go. It contains a manifest that it generated automatically for us and it contains our class file. Now, um, real, real quick, I wanted to point out the C in the jar command is for create and F is for file. And um, the T down here is to list. So T to list and F for file again. So let's move along here. So we, we showed the files in the jar. Now let's create an executable jar file. <clears throat> now we're gonna paste this in here. Notice we have C, F, and E. And we specify the name of our jar file that we wanna get and we specify the class that we want to include explicitly and we specify well okay so the class is here this is this is just telling it really uh, wildcard class to include all the classes in the directory for this but um, the reason we have a class specified here this is the entry point so um, the, the parameter e over here, see how we have CFE? E stands for entry point. It means we're explicitly specifying an entry point. So that's the class that's going to get run. Now, in this case, we only have one class file, but if we had more than one class file, we would want to tell it, you know, you kind of need to tell it which class to run by default, and then that class could include other classes. But, you know, when, if you have an executable jar file, it has to know which class is going to be the one that executes first. So um, even if we only have one class, we still have to specify that. And that's why we have this parameter right here. So let's run this. And there we go. Now we have an executable jar file. Now, same files here, except this new jar file is going to be executable. So I'm going to show you how you can execute that. 
So there's a couple ways you can execute the jar file. Now you can directly execute it by saying Java jar and the name of the jar file like that. Real simple. We just executed it and it says hello world. So we, we ran Java jar and we ran the jar file like this. So that's a direct way to run the jar file, right? Um, so pretty, pretty straightforward there. Now I can run this other command here to run a jar file. You can say Java dash CP hello world um, and what you're doing here is uh, basically you're specifying the class path CP for the class path and you are specifying the class that you want to run so first you say uh, you know, CP and hello world dot jar and this directory where yeah in, anyways you, you're specifying your class path here where, where you're gonna find jar files and and um, you're telling it to run this class. So it's gonna check inside this jar file for the class and run it. So you, you can do it like that. Anyways, um, moving along here, if you wanted to, so that basically shows you how to create a jar file, an executable, basic executable jar file. Now, say if you wanted to create, add another class to your jar file, and you, you wanted to make that other class the executable one, or the, the one that's executable first. Um, we, we can do that by creating a custom manifest. So what we're gonna do here, let, let's start out, we're, we're basically gonna create hello world two, and that's gonna be, our, we're gonna specify that as our entry point, right? So let's VI our manifest file. We're gonna create a manifest file, so we're gonna use a VI. And we're going to place that in our com test hello world directory and we're going to call it hello world manifest.txt. Right? So let's edit this and let's we're going to paste in a specification for another class that we haven't created yet, but we're about to create it. So um, notice the package name was com test hello world and the class file, our first class was hello world. Now we're going to specify hello world too. So we're going to have to create that. Now, one important thing is that you need you need a new line at the end of the file, and um, if you don't have a new line, your manifest is silently going to be excluded. So, um, let's see here. New line at the end of the file. All right, so we're going to, next we're gonna create our new class file, or, or our new Java file for our, our new class. So we're gonna vi com test hello world, hello world two dot Java. Our first one was hello world. Now we have hello world two. So let's go in here and I'm going to paste in this source code I have off screen and paste this in and you'll notice it's the, it's almost exactly the same as our first source file. The package name is the same. It's just com test hello world, but the class name is hello world two. And the text it outputs is hello world two instead of hello world. So you can tell which one is running. So we're gonna save this and we are going to compile everything again. We only really need to compile the new, the new source file, but let's just compile everything without thinking. So there we go, everything's recompiled. Um, let's run a find real quick, just to see what's here. Now notice we have our first class, um, we have our second source file, our, so yeah, we have our, yeah, so all right, this is our first class, our second class, our first source file, our second source file, and our manifest. And this is our jar file, right? So um, let's see here, we've compiled them, next step is to build them. Now we're going to, this is going to build an executable jar using a manifest. So this is the command you would use. And notice there's an M in there. So the M is for manifest. So instead of using an E for entry point, you're using M to specify the manifest and the manifest itself specifies the entry point. So let's run this. <clears throat> and we have now created a new jar file. Now let's, uh, let, let's execute the new jar file. Now it's gonna be the same name, the same jar file and everything, but let's just run this, the exact same command that we used before. And it now says, hello world two. So the jar file contains both classes, but it's running our second hello world program as its default entry point. Now let's real quick, let's run this with, uh, let's run this like this. 
Now this runs Hello World 1. Interesting thing to notice is that we're telling it to run this specific class, the, the original class that we can actually specify the class we want to run. So we run this class and we search inside our jar file for it. So even though we have, we have two classes in the jar file and by default, we're going to be running the second class. But if we specify the first class, we can tell it to run that one too. Now, if we modify this command a little bit to add a two on the end there, it's going to say two, it's going to run the second class. So if you have multiple classes inside a jar file, you can choose which one you run. And if you, uh, yeah, if you just run it without specifying like this, it's going to run the default one that was specified in your manifest. Now, real quick, I would like to show you what's inside the jar file right now. So let's see, jar tf hello world dot jar. Now, notice we have our manifest. Originally, it was created um, automatically. In this case, this is the manifest based on the custom manifest that we uh, specified but it also contains both of these class files and you can execute either of these class files while they exist in the jar file. And that is about it. So that's how you create a, an executable jar file in Java. So hopefully you found this useful or if, if not useful, at least interesting. Uh, you're, you're gonna wanna probably stay tuned for some of the other great content we have. We're, we cover a, lot, cover a lot of coding related stuff, whether it be like Java, JavaScript, Python, all sorts of great stuff you're not going to want to miss out on. So definitely hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't even let you know when we come out with new videos. So yeah, um, hit the subscribe, hit the bell icon. Um, you're not going to want to miss a lot of the stuff. We, we It's not just coding. We do a lot of coding stuff. We also do stuff with servers, um, electronics, um, single board computers, Raspberry Pis, networking, Linux, Windows, Mac OS, all sorts of great technology stuff. Um, just a t uh, We do 3D printing and uh, cryptocurrencies even. So a ton of great technology stuff you're going to want to have in your YouTube feed. So definitely subscribe. You might want to give us a thumbs up too, but more importantly than any of that, leave a comment down below. Um, anything you want to say, we do want to hear it. So, uh, you know, questions, comments, criticisms, anything you want to say, just leave a comment down below. If you know something I don't know, also leave a comment down below, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video, your comment may be helpful to them too. So yeah, definitely leave comments and that's about it for today. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.